Ooh, what's good commanders fans this video may be like five minutes because uh, i know i got this live the live stream coming up for you guys so it's not gonna be long but i just wanted to give credit to johnny jerzon newton and i'll do that tonight as well with my studs and duds and whatnot but uh, oh my gosh i mean the hell mary from last night i mean I, I just can't i'm still in a loss for words i'm still in shock i watched everybody's reaction video I put up a, a reaction video to the Hail Mary from last night on my on my um, so, so, on some social media pages. I may post that on here for you guys too. But I was lit. I was turned up. I was hitting the gritty with my kids and all that. I mean, I was lit. I was lit last night, and the whole city was lit. I mean, Jaden and the team—they just brought life and energy to the city, to the DMV. Any Commanders fan everywhere is just hyped right now. Um, the Bears fans are pissed and they're hating. They're trying to cope and all that. And I love it with a passion. They're all mad as I don't know what. They're all coping and they're crying uh, from last night with that win and that dagger that we put in the heart. Um, Jaden called game, man. He's him. He called game. Walk off. I don't know what you want to call it, the Maryland miracle or the Northwest Stadium miracle or the Noah Brown, Jaden, hell, Jaden, all that. You know, I mean, I don't know which. We got to find a name for it, of course, which we will. But Jaden Houdini pulled a rabbit out of his hat. Shout out to Zachers. And shout out to Tyreek Stevenson, too. I'm going to talk about this a little bit more during the live stream tonight, of course. But shout out to Tyreek Stevenson for fooling around, talking trash to the fans, waving goodbye, whatever he was doing. And the next thing you know, he makes the game play to tap it up with Zach Ertz and tag it up, tap it up to my guy Noah Brown, who just, just, just so smoothly and relaxed, just corralled it in for the walk-off, uh, for the walk-off Hail Mary game winning touchdown there so shout out to Tyreek Stevenson but I do want to go over some quick numbers from um Johnny Jerzon Newton so Adam Peters man once again I feel like I feel like this is a hit man and we don't really hit on second round picks like that and Johnny Newton was you know he was the big 10 defensive player of the year he racked up on sacks racked up on pressures uh is an athlete in the half uh has pass rep, pass move repertoire and everything counter moves all that good stuff you know he, he came back from the foot injuries both feet he had surgeries then he had um what he had like a stinger or something like that that held him out too so he had a couple injuries he was in a walking boot like when they drafted him, everybody's like oh my gosh this is a bad pick and i know it's still early it's, uh, nobody said it was a bad pick at the time but people were like oh my gosh you know maybe this is why he dropped to the second round because of the foot injuries and then the atlanta falcons took rook orohoro in front of johnny jerzon newton you know and i think he dropped because of the, the injury concerns and then you know the other foot popped up with him in a walking boot, but man, he showed out yesterday. He's a big part of the reason why we won. Jaden Daniels in an interview said the defense is a big part of why we won this game. You know, uh, and he Jaden Jaden Daniels acknowledged the crowd as well and the crowd noise and the, and the crowd being into it. So that was awesome from whoever was at the game and got to experience that. But uh, Johnny Newton had a, he had a breakout day yesterday, and Dan Quinn brought it up today too. Uh, so Johnny Newton, and he actually, he really had a sack on Caleb Williams, but they took it away because they said it was a design run. It really wasn't a design run in my opinion. Uh, cause, cause Caleb was running around like a chicken with his head cut off. And that's what Caleb does. He did it at USC. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't It worked for Caleb on that last drive, but for the most part, it did not work for the majority of the game. And, uh, Johnny Newton, Deron Payne, Bobby Wagner, Frankie Luba, they had him bottled up, man. Johnny Newton finished the day with three tackles, one tackle for loss, one fumble record. The one tackle for loss really should be a sack. One fumble recovered when they tried to uh, run like a a, a a fullback or offensive tackle dive up the middle like it was Refrigerator Perry from back in the day in the 1980s. And uh, Johnny Newton had three quarterback hits, man. He was living in the backfield yesterday. He really was. And he picked up that fumble. And if, if he didn't get touched, that could have been a fumble recovery for a touchdown. I like that he still ran down the field anyway, whether he got touched or not. I still like that Johnny Newton had the, the wherewithal to just keep running just in case. You never know. Um, you look at some of Johnny's PFF grades. I mean, he, uh, so Johnny, this is it right here. So Johnny has seven pressures, career high, one sack or one tackle for loss, one fumble recovery and a 31.3 pass rush, 31.3% pass rush win rate and a 90.9 .9 pass rush grade. That is elite level stuff. And if I'm not mistaken, he was the highest grade of PFF player for us yesterday, 89.2. Second was Jaden Daniels with an 80.8. Zacharis was a 75.7. Jeremy Chen was a 73.4, but Johnny Newton was the highest graded PFF player yesterday. And he's had to step up with John Allen being out. And John Allen, we all, everybody's like, oh, this is going to be his last year here, which it possibly could be. I believe there's a pot potential out in his contract, but they're going to trade. They, if anything, they're going to trade him, you know, for either like a third round pick, a third and a fifth. I can see something like that. 
or a fourth. Maybe his value is going down. Maybe John Allen's value is going down because of the injury and him not having you know the Pro Bowl season last year. But we're in good hands, guys. We're in good hands. Whether John Allen is here next year or not, I would like to see John Allen back. But, you know, if he's not here next year, they got a guy in Johnny Newton, man, who, who's coming. He's on the way, man. And Dan Quinn said this, too, in the presser today. Um, this is what he said about Johnny Newton. He said, um, he's the one who really jumped out to me yesterday. Uh, he really jumped out. And there was something else he said, too, but I can't find it. Oh, here's the notes that I wrote down. Yeah, Johnny Newton, he had him as a three-tech and felt him inside to get the from recovery. Good to see him pressure, get the pressure he generated over the guard in the center, over the middle. It's the one of the guys that he's been talking about all along. He, he, he uh, you know, had a breakout game yesterday. So Dan Quinn gave Johnny Newton a lot of praise. And um, also he gave a, gave a small update on Jane Daniels, just saying that he felt sore. But it's nothing really. So he's going to play on Sunday. And then uh, Brandon Coleman, uh, he's going to still be evaluated with that concussion. So... Uh, he, he he said, Quinn said, the team hopes to have a better sense of where Brandon Coleman concussion is at later in the week. But, man, I just want to give Johnny Newton his credit, man, for yesterday. Uh, he's had some okay games, some pedestri pedestrian games to start all. But I think he's starting to get warmed up, man, and get more comfortable out there and getting used to the speed of the game and whatnot and getting to the chemistry, getting used to the chemistry with him next to Deron Payne. And I think the sky is the limit for this guy, man. I think we finally hit on our second round pick. Once again, it's, it's very early. It's only one game that we've seen him really hit that tap, tap that potential that we all see in Johnny Newton for sure. But I think more is going to come, man, and I think he's going to get he's going to get pressure on Jan, on, Dan, on Daniel Jones this weekend too, coming up on Sunday. So, man, I'm excited about about um, Johnny Newton. So we've seen Adam Peters fleece the league with his Jahan Dotson trade and um, making a steal of a signing with Noah Brown, um, and then making a steal of a signing with Austin Siebert, and then getting Jaden Daniels at number two instead of getting Kayla Williams, getting the better quarterback out of the two. Mikey Sanders still starting to look really good, too. So this draft starting to pan out. This The free agent signers with Zach Hurts, he's playing well. Good football. Austin Eckler, even though he was awful yesterday with a drop and the terrible kick return uh, before the Hail Mary, but in uh, Bobby Wagner, Frankie Lou. So Adam Peters, man, he should win GM of the year, and I think Dan Quinn is getting close to winning coach of the year as well. And then Jaden Daniels, of course, off his rookie of the year. And then possibly, possibly, if we keep this streak up, MVP, I'm telling you, it's not far-fetched. It's not far-fetched. So I just want to acknowledge Adam Peters and give credits to Johnny Newton for having a breakout game this year for sure. And I hope they do change the tackle for loss into a um, sack instead of that. So all right, you guys, you guys let me know what you guys think. As always, Hell's Commanders. Peace. Man, that Hail Mary was something, man. I'm still, I could barely sleep last night just thinking about that Hail Mary. But all right, I'll see you guys at 720. All right, you guys, Hell's Commanders. Peace.